Hi guys, welcome back. In this video I'm going to be discussing the selection sort algorithm for arrays and I will give you a sample implementation using C++. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, basically the way that the selection sort algorithm works is you have a set of nested loops. Okay, and the outer loop is going to be responsible for us traversing this entire array in one pass. Okay, so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to start at the first element, right, uh, courtesy of our outer loop, and then we're going to have an inner loop that's going to be responsible for helping us search the rest of the array. Okay, and what it's searching for is it's searching for the smallest value remaining that is less than the current element we're considering. Okay, And the idea is that um, we're going to swap those two. Okay, So once the smallest remaining value has been found, if it is smaller than the element we're currently on, then we're going to swap the values. Okay, And then we move on to the next element. Right? Uh, say element 1 here, right? We started at 0, we're going to move to element 1, and then we're going to consider all of the remaining elements, in this case 2 through 6, and find the smallest remaining element. If it's smaller than the current element we're on, we swap them. Okay, then we move to the next element. Okay, uh, then we will consider the remaining elements, and find the smallest remaining one, and if it is smaller than the current element we're on, we'll swap them. Okay, we just repeat that process until we're done. So we're going to have two loops, an outer loop which moves us all the way through and an inner loop which helps us determine uh, the smallest remaining value in the array. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so our outer loop we would start here okay, uh, with 10. Okay, Then our inner loop iteration would kick in. And we're going to assume, we're going to start by assuming that 10 is the smallest element in the array. Okay? And then our inner loop is going to help us decide what the smallest remaining element is and whether or not it is smaller than the 10, than the first element. Okay? So, starts off, uh, we assume that 10 is the smallest. And then we ask, okay, is the jack smaller than 10? Nope is 2 smaller than 10? Yes it is. So this is now currently uh, the candidate for smallest remaining element, right? Right now these are candidate to swap each other, to swap with each other. Okay, so we move on to the next element, the inner loop does, is jack less than 2? Because now we're comparing to the to the smallest element now, okay? Well, the candidate for the smallest element, no, they're not smaller. It's jack's not smaller than 2, so move to the next one. Is 2 smaller than 2? Nope. Go to 7. Is 7 smaller than 2? No. Is 6 smaller than 2? No. We found the smallest remaining element in the array. So now we're going to swap these guys. Okay. That finishes our inner loop. Now we're going to move to the top iteration of the outer loop. And now we're going to assume that the jack here is the smallest remaining element in the array. Okay. And we're going to start. We're going to use our inner loop again. It's going to start at this element here and it's going to start making comparisons. Okay, so is the 10 less than the jack? Yes it is. So now we're going to assume that 10 is the smallest remaining element in the array. Let's move to the next element. Is this jack smaller than 10? No. So we move on. Is 2 smaller than 10? Yes. So we're going to assume that the 2 is now the smallest remaining element in the array. Continue our comparisons. Is 7 less than 2? No. Is 6 less than 2? No we found the values that we need to swap. Okay, so we swap 2 and the jack. Right? That completes our outer loop. Um, let's move to the next iteration, the top iteration, top of the loop. Okay, so now we're at the 10 again. Okay, we're going to assume that the 10 is the smallest remaining value. And then we're going to use the inner loop to check the rest of them, the remaining values. So with the jack less than 10, no. Move to the next element. Is the jack less than 10? No. Move to the next element. Is 7 less than 10? Yes, it is. So 7 is now a candidate 
for being the smallest remaining value in the array. Okay, so move on to the next element. Is 6 less than 7? Yep, so now 6 is the candidate for the smallest remaining element. Okay, and since there are no more elements, then we, we're done with that with the, uh, the inner loops iteration, and we swap them. Okay. And then that finishes, that completes the outer loops iteration, and we go to the top of the iteration, and we consider the jack. One more element over. Okay. So we assume the jack is the smallest remaining value, and we start with the inner loop, checking the rest of them. All right. So is a jack less than a jack? Nope. So he is not a candidate. Is 7 less than a jack? Yep. So 7 is our new candidate to be the smallest remaining value. This is the candidate to be. This is our swap candidate. Okay, then we check the last element. Is 10 less? No. So 7 is the smallest remaining element, so that's what we're going to swap with. Okay. Then we move to the next iteration of the, of the outer loop. Okay, we assume this jack is the smallest remaining element. And the inner loop checks this first element. Is it smaller than the jack? No. Is the 10 smaller than the jack? Yep. Uh, that's the last element, so these are the ones we need to swap. Okay. Do the swap. And then the outer loop moves to the next element. The inner loop begins, and it's going to end with the last element here, and it's going to ask, is the jack less than the jack? No, it's not. So there's no swapping to be done. Okay. And we stop the algorithm there. We stop one away from the end because it's sorted. There's no reason to do one more comparison where we're done. Okay, so we can see now that the uh, all the values, all the cards are in fact sorted. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Okay, so what are the advantages of using the selection sort? Well, selection sort uh, is generally more efficient than a bubble sort. Right? We made one complete pass here, right, at, at the top level of the outer loop. Right. We had several inner loop passes, but they were shrinking every single every single time we moved. Our outer loop moved us one element over. Okay. What's the disadvantages? It's a little more complex to understand and implement. Okay. Um, but then the bubble sort. But it's not it's not too bad. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the code for this. Okay. We have code blocks. All right, so um, here's the actual code for it, and um, I think what I'll do is I will redo this and then and do it line by line. Okay. So uh, we're gonna need, as I said at the beginning, we're gonna need two loops. So why don't we uh, why don't we get those out of the way right now? Those are the first pieces um, for this demonstration uh, for this implementation, we'll just assume that we want to sort a integer array. It could be any data type, just like with a bubble sort, but we'll just assume it's an integer for this for this one. So there's our parameter for the uh, array that we're going to pass to the selection sort function. We're going to need a length parameter right, to let the function know how long the array is that we're sorting. And so we're going to have a couple of for loops here. Okay, So we're going to have the uh, the outer loop, and um, we'll uh, we'll call this thing start scan. Okay. Okay. Equal zero, and start scan is going to be less than length minus one. Okay. And then it's going to implement by one each time. Okay. Why call it start scan? Well, that's where we're going to start scanning. Uh, the array, right? Moving from left to right. Okay. So that's our outer loop. Okay. Outer loop responsible for moving us along the entire array. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to stop one element short, right? This is I showed you in the demo, but uh, you know, you get the idea. Okay, so our inner loop, we're going to have for x equals start scan plus 1. It's going to start, the inner loop's going to be looking for all of the values uh, to the right of the element the outer loop is currently on, right? So that's why we're starting uh, 
one element over from wherever the start scan is, okay? From wherever the outer loop currently is. Okay. And this inner loop is going to check the rest of the array. So we're going to go the full length. Okay. All right. Inner loop uh, responsible for checking, for finding lowest remaining value in the array. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to need uh, a couple variables to keep track of the lowest remaining value in the array, right? We're going to, we, you saw that that kind of changed in the card demo. So we have to have a couple variables that are going to help us uh, keep track of that, okay? We're going to have this variable min index, which is going to be responsible for storing the index of the minimum value remaining, okay? And then we're going to have to have a variable for storing that minimum value. Okay, and this this um, min value, uh, these variables are also going to help us out with our swap too. Okay, so at the top of each iteration, remember from the card demo, I talked about how we're assuming this card is the uh, is the uh, smallest remaining value. Okay, so we're going to note that right here with these variables. Okay, so min index equals start scan. Okay. So we're assuming that the element that the outer loop is currently on is the smallest remaining. It's just an assumption. Doesn't mean it's going to be true. Okay. So we're storing the index of it and we're also going to store the uh, the value. Okay. Uh, So we're going to begin each iteration assuming current element is the smallest remaining. Okay. All right. So then our inner loop is going to be responsible for finding the lowest remaining value. How is it going to do that? It's going to compare uh, each of the remaining elements to our current candidate to be the actual minimum remaining value. Okay, so how are we going to do that comparison? We're going to use an if statement. Okay, so if a of index. Okay, if the current the inner loop remember is going to traverse the rest of the array, and if its current element is less than the minimum value, right? Our minimum value candidate. Then we're going to update the uh, minimum value. Okay, so the min value is going to equal the current element okay, remaining okay, from the inner loop. And the index is also going to have to be uh, updated. Okay. All right. So this could change multiple times, right? Um, it could be that the first value it looks at is smaller than the current value the outer loop has us on, right? But it could be that two elements later, uh, we find a value smaller yet. Okay, so this inner loop and this if statement is going to take care of that. Okay, this is going to perform comparisons looking for smallest remaining uh, value in the array. Okay. All right. So once that's finished, right? Once that for loop is done uh, executing, we have found our smallest remaining value. Okay. It just so turns out that the smallest remaining value could also be the value stored in the current element uh, of the outer loop's iteration. So let's write code here to do the swap. It could swap with itself, okay? But anyway, let's 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 write the code for that. A uh, min index set to a start scan, okay? A of start scan 
equal to min value. Okay, so this performs the swap. Okay, so A of min index, this is the location in the array, okay, where the smallest value needs to go. Okay, A of start scan is the beginning iteration of the outer loop, right? This is this is the current element that uh, that the outer loop is looking at. Okay, so this is where the swapping of the two cards takes place. Okay, All right, and okay, and so both of these statements are what are responsible for performing the actual swap. So let's go ahead and uh, test this now. That's that should be all the code that we uh, that we need. So let's make a uh, let's make a dummy for a test array. Int a. We use an initialization list: five, three, eight, one, negative ten. Just pulling something out of my keyster here. Let me uh, write a helper print function just to print out the contents of the arrays to help us with testing. Okay. And it's just going to print the array element by element with spaces in between. Tack on uh, end line at the end. Okay, so let's test that. Print a, uh, there's five elements. Okay, so print or display, display the uh, unsorted thread. Okay, there it is. Alright, now let's run the selection sort. And then let's print uh, sorted array. Okay. okay, and here we go. All right, so there we go. It's sorted. We ten, one, three, five, and eight. So everything works great. All right, so. Let me uh, throw the code up here one more time for you. Okay, selection sort. Uh, the outer loop, right? This is what moves us from element to element to element, right? Um, until we get to the next to the last element. Um, this is the code that assumes the current element we are examining is the smallest. Okay, the inner loop is responsible for traversing the remaining elements in the array looking for the smallest remaining value that uh, could be less than the element we started with. Okay, And then once that inner loop finishes iterating, this last two lines of code here are what is responsible for doing the swap. Okay, So that is everything that I needed to talk about with selection sort. All right, so I hope this uh, video helped you out and it makes sense. Um, again, the advantages, it's a more efficient algorithm. The disadvantage, uh, it's a little harder to understand than a bubble sort. Okay, But either one will work great. Um, if you have any questions on this, as always, feel free to shoot me an email or stop by my office hours. All right? Great. We'll see you in class. Thanks for watching.